Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Toast and today we are back with another Final Fantasy Brave Exodus video and today we're gonna review the uh, ability awakening for uh, Miss Ayaka, Nyx and Onion Knight. So without further ado, let's go here and see how good Ayaka, she was already really really good but how much better she got. So her first awaken ability is stop detach so basically it cures uh, the stop on all allies. Once you increase it once you're gonna have increased the stop by 100% for two turns and once you increase a sec uh, second time you're gonna have uh, stop resistance 100% resist for five turns to all allies. So this thing is really really good. Uh, not that expensive with 250,000 gills so for a grand total of 500,000. It could be useful you know as you're fighting bosses and everything that have uh, stop there have a chance to stop you and everything it makes her really really good and already she's an amazing healer so if you guys have her just use her as much as possible and this just made her even better then she has dedication which is basically the big move that uh she's gonna heal you and also give mp to your whole party so if you awaken it one so dedication plus one you basically get the same amount of healing, which is 2,500 HP and 50 MP to your whole party. The big difference is you're going to get an increase in LB gauge from 1 to 5 Chris. So from 1 to 5 Chris is going to boost your LB gauge to all characters, except the caster. So take that in note. Uh, it's really expensive and you're going to need some healing Chris and it's a million gil each awakening on the second time so dedication plus two basically recover 4000 hp which is really really nice and 80 mp to all allies except caster and now you have a chance to get two to seven crystal uh on everybody's gauge except ayaka one more time so uh it's really good if you need healing or if you need mp to your old party since ayaka has a lot of mp regeneration and stuff like that uh, it could be really, really good for your party. It's really expensive with 99 MP, but if you make a build where she gets a lot of MP and she recovers a lot of it, uh, you can you can get out of it pretty pretty easily with those 99 MP. So dedication plus two, actually really really good. You can boost your LB gauge a little bit faster, and uh, it's pretty nice. Pretty expensive, but still pretty pretty decent. Then. She has Sage's Wisdom, so plus one, you get increase in SPR 80% with equipped with a staff, and Sage plus two, uh, Sage Wisdom, sorry, plus two, you get increase in SPR by 100% with equipped with a staff, and you're gonna increase your LB gauge two per turn. So that thing is really, really good, really not expensive, you're gonna be using some white Chris, and it's only 120,000 gil, so uh, really not bad. Ayaka. Already she's a really strong healer, having that increase in SPR by 100%, you're gonna have those heal even stronger, so uh, go for it. If you guys don't have too much gil, I would still go for Sage's Wisdom as much as possible, and maybe stop Detach, because Dedication, it's good, but you're not gonna be using all that time, especially if you have CG Nicole, where you can get a big MP regen over and over so for me stop detach and sage wisdom is actually really really good and they're really not expensive moving on we're gonna go to nyx mr kingslave uh that nobody uses because you know what even with his awakened abilities for me he's still not gonna cut it uh then we have warp charge so let's go over it warp charge plus one physical damage two times with ignore 50 percent to one enemy uh the only thing that is cheaper is the MP on that one. When you have Warp Charge plus two, the only big difference is you're gonna have a defense and uh, you're gonna have a magic, magic and spirit break by 50% for five turns to one enemy. It's really, really good, but really expensive. So your guild is gonna cost you two million guild just to have that. Uh, if you have, let's say your tank, uh, Warrior of Light or Bosch, with those 45% break, they're still really good for three turns. And this dude, that's a lot of guild. Uh, then we have Warp Strike, basically same thing, so you go from, uh, I think it's 42, let's go over here, I just want to make sure, uh, Warp Strike, so it's 45 MP, so you go from 45 MP to 36, which is not that bad, uh, same thing, you get a, basically, reduce MP cost on Warp Strike plus 1, Warp Strike plus 2, basically you get a decrease in attack and defense by 50% for 5 turns to 1 enemy, and it's still a million gills, so let's say you guys want to, enhance the warp charge and warp strike it's gonna cost you four million gil the break is nice if you guys do have the gil and the um the chris for it go for it uh if you don't then you can probably hold on to those chris and that gil 
because 4 million you're not going to be using nyx that often to be honest unless he's your main damage dealer those breaks are really really nice but for me it's just not cutting it i still don't think he's gonna have a big space in my party especially if we're near fighting bosses and everything but nonetheless uh, they still look really really nice if you can go for it if not hold on to your crist and your gill then he has kingslave uh, physical damage 2.5 with ignore defense to one enemy so 50 percent and decrease fire resistance by 50 percent for three turns to one enemy it's a eight it move then he has king's life plus two physical damage now you go to 2.75 and you get decrease in fire by 70 percent for three turns to one enemy this one is actually really really nice uh if you are using fixed dice you can dish out a lot of damage and if i'm not mistaken we're gonna go right here Where's his move? Where's the move? Where's the move? Uh, there you go. You use Hero's Pride, so you basically do a physical damage, and you're gonna add Fire Element to your attack for five turns. Then you can use King's Lave, and you can dish out a lot of damage since you're gonna have the Fire uh, Element on your uh, fixed dice, and you decrease the Fire Resistance by seventy five dice seventy percent. Sorry. So that thing could look could look really really nice. The only thing is. It's another million gil and another, another million gil. So let's say you want to awaken everything. Right now you're looking at 6 million gil, which is really, really expensive for a character that we don't see that much. Uh, unless he's your main unit, guys, uh, I would probably hold on to that gil and those crisps. I have him. I don't use him that often. Uh, yeah, the breaks is nice, but that's probably the only thing he's going to be doing. Then we're going to go over the last one, Dagger Mastery plus one. 75% uh, when equipped with a dagger and dagger mastery plus two increase attack by 100% when equipped with dagger. dagger sorry like I said before I think the best way to build him is really with fixed dice because you get that damage multiplier and uh, just giving him a dagger unless that's all you have go for it but if you have fixed dice you don't need to awaken that one so for me Nyx disappointing a little bit uh, he still he still has his usefulness don't get me wrong but for me uh, it's a little bit of disappointment. Uh, maybe if the bricks would have been a little bit stronger, like 55%, uh, I think it would have been better. But that extra 5% right here, and it's really expensive, just not gonna cut it for me. So Ayaka, really good. Nyx, eh, not that bad, but that's my personal opinion. You guys let me know down below what you think about that. Then the last one, we're gonna go over in the night. But before we go, guys, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe down below leave a like on this video and let me know what you guys think about ayaka nyx and onion knight when i finish this review so let's go over onion knight we're gonna go down right here all right so basically splendor of the wind splendor of the fire splendor of the water splendor of the earth uh that's okay so those four let's go over those four they're all the same the only difference is uh the element that's going to be attached to the weapon after so uh, splendor of the wind splendor of the fire splendor of the water and splendor of the earth what they do is once you do the plus one on all four you get add wind element to physical attack for two turns to caster all right so sorry uh, so for the wind you get wind that uh, you get wind to your attack for two turns fire you get fire attack for two turns water you get water element atta uh, attached to your weapon for two turns and earth you basically get earth, dam uh, earth element attached to your weapons for two turns. Not bad at all. The only big difference, it's going to be the crisp. So wind is going to take green crisp, fire is going to take power crisp, and water is going to take healing crisp, and earth is going to take guard crisp. Really expensive at a million dollars each. So if you are to awaken everything, it's going to cost you eight million, which is going to be really, really expensive, but we're not done yet. All right, so the second you awaken them plus two, each one of them uh, basically decreases wind resistance by 50% for one, to one enemy. So you're going to imperil the element that you had put on your weapon for one turn by 50%. Increase the modifier on onion slice plus 3.2 and increase the modifier on onion cutter by 3.6. This is really, really good. So you're going to be able to dish out even more damage. So onion slice... If I go right here, I think it's on the weapon. Uh, is it on the weapon? No, it's right here. So onion slice already is a four times multiplier. If you do this here, 
you're going to have a 7.2 times multiplier, which is going to be really, really strong. And you're going to be able to chain, if I'm not mista mistaken, it's going to be something around like 47 or 48 hits. Uh, that's going to be a lot of damage, guys. With the imperil and the element on your weapon, that could do a lot of damage. Then you have onion cutter, which is right here, is a 5.2 times multiplier. If you do it here, 5.2 plus a 3.6, you're going to be looking at an 8.8 times multiplier and that could dish out a lot of damage with the imperil and also with the element the element attached to your weapon that could be crazy and don't forget on every single plus two you get an increase uh, you get a multiplier instead of 3.8 it goes to a four times multiplier it might not look a lot but since you're doing a lot of hits that multiplier is just going to increase and more and more and more so you're going to be able to dish out a lot of damage so if you do have the crisp and the gill for it go for it because this this team these things right here is just going to make your onion knight do even more and more damage and you can chain them with a friend sephiroth and i'm pretty sure most of you guys have a friend sephiroth in your friends list or stuff like that or onion knight so they become really really good so onion knight my dude do you get a thumbs up i'm still waiting for you to show in one of my rainbows so onion knight if you're listening to this Please show up in one of the rainbows in the future. Please, my dude, just show up for me. So that's for all of them that you do fire, wind, earth or water. You're going to get that four times multiplier instead of a 3.8. And you're going to unlock, you're going to increase the modifier on your uh, onion slice and onion cutter by the same amount on every single four of them. So it's really, really good, especially if you guys didn't beat the uh, mom, uh, mom bomb and the dad bomb. This thing could look really, really nice to increase the damage and really break them apart super fast. Then he has one more, which is Blessed Crystal. In my opinion, this one is the best one, uh, especially because it's really, really cheap. So only 60,000 gil each. So it's going to cost you 120,000 gil. Increase LB gauge fill rate 100%. We got that. Then increase resistance to poison, sleep, uh, confuse and disease by 50%, which is not bad. It's pretty good. Once you do it plus two, that's where it gets really interesting. So increase attack by 50% and defense and spirit by 10% would equip with a sword. Yes, the onion sword. Increase attack by 15% when and defense and spirit by 10% when equipped with a helm. Yes, in his own helm. And increase attack 15% and defense and spirit 10% would equip with a light armor. So if we go over right here, we're going to go over all his accessories right here. He's going to get, if you have the onion elm, onion armor, onion sword, he's going to get an increase in 45% to attack and increase in defense and spirit by 30%. Only for 120,000 gil. Uh, this thing is really, really cheap. I would really tell you guys, go for it because this thing is the cheapest one and it's going to be really, really good. You're going to be able to increase the amount of uh, attack on your onion knight by a lot for really, really cheap. So for me, Onion Knight, you get a good thumbs up, my friend, and you look really cool. And like I said, dude, don't forget, show up in one of my rainbows because I want you. I'm missing you in my collection, so show up in one of my rainbows in the future. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Let me know down below which one of these units you are going to awaken and why you're gonna go awaken their abilities guys thank you so much for watching i'll catch you guys on the next video peace